The backstage center is a building that allows you to realize production, rehearsals, and training ambitions in a professional, world-class, cutting-edge environment, working with some of the world's best artists and technicians to make sure that the training that's offered to young people is world-class. Particularly one of our main features is uh, a big picture behind uh, the reception desk, which is on a light box. Um, and that's because what we didn't want in terms is people to come in and look like a, a hotel kind of welcome actually should say what this building is about. The story of the Backstage Centre, how did it come about? Oh, it's a big story. It's a story that goes for six years back to a big piece of research that Creative and Cultural Skills did across England to look at what was happening in the theatre and live music sector at that time. And from that, a big decision was made to build a centre that could support the growth of the sector through effective skills and training by bringing industry and training providers together in a way that hadn't been done before. And so this building is the end of that process um, six, seven years ago, and it now is, is that building which is here to, to, to drive industry and training closer together by giving them the facilities that they've never had before. Well, other than this amazing recording studio, we have a main space which is it's akin to a sound stage, if you like. It's a big film quality space with a 15 meter high under the ceiling, lots of height, lots of width and breadth, big enough for an arena scale band to come in and do a final rehearsal prior to going on tour. It's also big enough for a West End musical to come in to do a full rehearsal prior to moving into the West End. We've got a fantastic dance studio with a sprung floor and ballet mirrors. And then we've got a number of other training rooms around the main space that can be used for lighting, sound, audio-visual training as a precursor to moving into the main space. Mm. So we offer a lot of flexibility. So there's nothing you can't do here in technical theatre training. But it is very much rooted in where, where this place is, which is being in Perthleet and being, being in Essex, being this close to London uh, as well, uh, actually has that potential for people to be moving out east, which is a you know, traditional thing people have done. Actually, there's a lot of potential in, in terms of throw up and perfleet and areas like that to, to be a real central hub for creativity in not only this region, I would say even in the country. Anybody can use it. Uh, professionals can use it. A band can come in for rehearsals. Uh, a lighting or sound equipment com company can come in for research and development and showcasing and testing of new gear. The further education sector do use it. Um, South Essex College use it to deliver degree live production arts courses. Higher education uh, are interested in it now. We've had a number of visits from some of the big universities who are delivering um, production arts courses. The community can use it. We've had a lot of community engagement. Um, we can do weekend workshops for people who've never engaged with theatre or the creative industries before. It is endless. It's been uh, an interesting experiment in terms of can you really genuinely get education partners working with industry. I think a lot of people talk about closer links, uh, trying to make, make it real really, particularly for young people. Often what happens, as you know, is that they'll study a particular course, but the course doesn't necessarily relate to what the industry does. A great example of that is our own grid here at the Backstage Centre. It's split into three because you have wooden slats in some theatres and you have tension wire in other art centres. And what often happens in terms of training and experiments is you will train on something that's very state-of-the-art and very new, but the reality of the job doesn't match for that. So trying to get the industry to open up to give people genuine experiences uh, is something we, we've been doing. It's very much about uncovering uh, jobs that people don't know exist anymore. Mm -hmm. So taking the blanket off a very rich environment people just don't know exists. If no one shows you what goes on to make an event happen, yeah. you know, a television program or a piece of theatre or even you know a art within an art gallery, why is any young person going to be interested in following that career or finding a course? So stage one has to be get young people in, get them with their hands on into stuff, experiencing and working with professionals, be it playing music in, in a band room or be it setting up a, a stage together. The Creative Choices event is where we work with our industry supporters, as we call them, uh, to open their doors one day a year, to invite young people locally to come in and meet people who do jobs behind the scenes and actually get their hands on and try having a go at lighting, having a go at marketing a programme. 
a whole range of particular things. So they, they've been things that have been really successful. Yeah, because it was also an annual conference, wasn't it, for creating cultural skills? Indeed. I remember seeing that set up uh, happening there with, and, and was it Jules Holland who launched yeah. the building and opened yeah. the building? That's right, Jules Holland launched the building. South Essex College were very engaged in the technical fit up for the conference. So again, it was about taking professional needs out, back out to the further education sector and bringing students in to a professional event where they were expected to deliver at a professional level. It's a model for the future. Um, in five years, I see it delivering a broad cross-section of activities, from training for both further education, um, higher education as well, recent graduates. I see school teachers coming in to, to learn some specialist skills here to fit into the, the school curriculum. Mm. I see it as being part of the move east out of London of the creative sector. It's very much about that broad spectrum of activity. I mean, it's sitting in High House Production Park. Yeah. So the very nature of that production park is that it's a business park for the creative sectors. So it's like a blank canvas. We've done a couple of what we call community open days, which has been working with local people and just inviting them in to come and have a look around called Be Nosy Days. Because you may have no relationship to the building, but it, it should feel that it's right for Backstage Centre as being here. What you've got here is quite unique. You've got a, a mashup of an industrial park, you've got the Royal Opera House Production Workshop, you've got the Backstage Centre, you've got Acme Studios, Artist Studios coming on board, and you've got a children's playground, and you've got an open park and orchard, and you've got some community gardens. Well, I, I don't know of anywhere else in the country that's got those two things on the same site. So it's really important that uh, both those parts, the community and the industry, uh, come together uh, and feel that each is part of the other. I feel that the, the place of the Backstage Centre should be one of national and international standing. It should be recognised as this is the place where people come in the industry to train. That this is the place where, for young people, you get genuine access to real live briefs to work on real uh, productions and real rehearsals. Yeah.